Now, there's many ways to do risk analysis. We're not going to try to cover them all here. But one of the most useful tools, in our opinion, is risk bow tie analysis. The practice started in hazard management, and it's become popularized in enterprise risk, but I think it can be applied to nearly all forms of risk management. A risk bow tie is a visual analysis diagram that gets its name from the shape. It looks like a bow tie. Now, the diagram would typically get completed um, by subject matter experts, either working on their own or in a workshop setting. Um, the risk event that you're concerned about goes in the middle, and then you can map your root causes or precipitating events or conditions on the far left. You then identify and map the potential consequences on the far right, and then you can map your controls or mitigations as being either pre-event or post-event. Now with pre-event mitigations, we're, we're trying to stop the event from happening. And with post-event mitigations, you know, if the event does happen, we're trying to lessen the impact or get back up and running faster. So now to, to illustrate this, I'm gonna use a simple everyday example of a driver losing control of a car at high speed. Now, maybe I'm a traffic safety engineer thinking about this problem. Later on, when Guggen shares his practical examples, I think he's going to show you a bow tie that's built out with some more proper business, uh, business information. So I'm just going to keep this one really simple at this stage to explain the concept. In my example, I could identify a number of potential root causes. Now, the roads might be icy or wet, and maybe the driver is going too fast, and maybe the driver is inexperienced. Similarly, I can identify and map the potential consequences if the risk event occurs. There may be damage to property, serious injuries, legal liability. Now, normally in a business example, these consequences would relate to the objectives of whatever activities behind the risk assessment. Once I've done my root cause analysis, I can identify and map my pre-event mitigations. Now, if you look at these, you'll notice how the mitigations actually align with the root causes. I mean, they don't have to one-to-one, -to -one, but that's conceptually kind of how you think about them. For example, I might also identify that the road is designed in a way that encourages people to speed. And so therefore, you know, I might decide that I need to modify the road design with traffic calming. And finally, I can identify and map uh, post-event mitigations to lessen the impact if the risk event occurs. Now, notice how these mitigations are typically aligned with the consequences in the way that pre-event mitigations were linked with controls. Now, you might also have noticed in this example that I talked about mitigations that we might already have in place or maybe mitigations I need to add in the future. Now, in practice, you typically want to separate these out to make it clear which ones currently exist and which ones are only recommended or planned. These planned mitigations may also get captured in follow-up action plans. And as a final comment, I'd say that completing this type of analysis you know, really is the heart of risk assessment. Um, and one of the nice things about a tool like a bow tie diagram is that it's scenario based. You can show a lot of different scenarios uh, and you know how they might unfold in one you know, relatively simple intuitive diagram. Bow tie analysis is also often a great way to introduce risk analysis to business users, especially if you're in a workshop setting. I find that that this type of a discussion is often where the penny drops, you know, so to speak, for business people, where they actually start to see the benefit of, of risk management and proactive planning. Um, and now that I've gone through this example, let's bring it back to risk scoring. Hopefully now you can see how it would be much easier to select the various values of likelihood and impact after you've been through this bow tie analysis. Now I should also say that you wouldn't typically, or you wouldn't necessarily anyway, build a, a bow tie out for every single risk in your, in your register. But it is a best practice for your risks that score higher in your initial prioritization and, and for risks that are linked to your most important objectives. And finally, one other approach we've seen work really well is to integrate risk voting into the process. So for example, you know, you might have a workshop with a group of subject matter experts or senior leaders where you review the bow tie diagrams of your top risks. You could then conduct a live risk vote and then use the results from the vote to help you set the risk scores. Um, there's an interesting kind of byproduct or phenomenon that comes out of this, and that is that once business managers and executives have voted on risks, they tend to feel more of a sense of ownership for the program and for the risks. Um, that's, that's something that we, we hear a lot from risk managers who do risk votes.